In Bologna, they have a ragu called bolognese. It has carrots, onions, celery, meat. It's cooked in milk, it's got nutmeg. Let me show you how to make it the traditional way. Start with your sofrito. What is a sofrito? Carrot, onion, celery. That's what it is. And the ratio is 25% carrot, 25% celery, 50% onion. Tablespoon and a half of butter. And we're gonna cut that with some olive oil. And what that's gonna do is insulate the butter from burning. And you want those onion to be about the same amount of thickness as the carrots and the celery. Here comes the onion. Bolognese. It's the ragu from Bologna. That's all it is. We are doing it exactly like the people from Bologna do with one change. We're going all beef. We want some browning to happen here with our sofrito before we put the meat in. The meat's gonna drop the temperature of the pan because of the water content little black pepper, but no salt. That's the secret here. You don't put any salt, none, not until the very end. So now that there's some color on the sofrito, you can start to see the edges of the onions burning. Things are shrinking up, lots of waters come out. We come in with the beef and you're gonna break it up. See all the water vapor coming up? That's the temperature of the pan dropping. Keep breaking it up. This can take a while. Check out the bottom of the pan. See how it's all white? Now that most of the water's out of the beef, or whatever meat you decide to use, the beef is gonna start to brown. And you're gonna get all these brown bits on the bottom of the pan. And that's cool, we want that to happen, because that's flavor. Now that we have lots of brown bits, we need to deglaze them off the bottom of the pan. So here's where you hit it with water or white wine. So now you scrape with your spoon, and so you're trying to release all the caramelized brown bits, or whatever you want to call them, back into the sauce. That is deglazing, and that is the most important flavor building step of this entire recipe. An often overlooked, but traditional step, whole milk. No joke. This is going to give us an absolutely velvety texture. Nutmeg. This goes in with the milk now. Quite a bit of it, like a third of a nutmeg. So now we mix that around. So the main thing now we're trying to do is reduce a little bit of this liquid away without having the milk curdle. Now we're coming in with tomato paste. Bring the temp up a little bit. And now you come in with an entire can of whole peeled San Marzano tomatoes. So now what I've done here is I've taken our can of tomatoes and I've filled it with water. Half a can of water. And it's gonna get the rest of the tomato out of the can, but it's also a fundamental step. The Italians put a ton of water in this so that it can braise without burning. You know, less water means more intensified sugars and then stuff burns to the bottom. More water means less chance of those sugars burning to the bottom. So once that comes to a simmer, you then put the pan as low as it'll go, and you cover it. This is where you let it simmer for hours and hours and hours with the top on. When you're getting ready to have this for dinner, you take the top off, you turn up the heat a little, and you reduce that water down. Everything has intensified, and this is exactly why we've put no salt. Because if we salted it with all that water in there, it'd be twice as salty now, right? So now you get to taste it and decide if you need to put salt or not. You don't need it. Fresh pappardelle is a great choice. So are rigatoni. This is the closest thing to spaghetti and meatballs you'll ever get. If you feel like the sauce is too tight, you just add some pasta water. I'm gonna add a little bit of Parmesan right into the bowl, and then you can finish the dish with it as well. The moment of truth. Yeah, look at that. You can hit it with some parm. You wanna hit it with parsley? I'm totally cool with that. This is what I've been waiting five hours for. If you make that, you're a hero, period. Hero, hero or heroine. It's not quick, but it's damn good.